all right alrighty so in today's video i'm going to be sharing with you exactly how to select the right dte and the right strike price every single time regardless whichever option strategy that you're choosing to trade more specifically option selling strategies so whenever i release any videos regarding strategies inevitably i will have a number of people that will always ask me you know davis what is the dte that you choose what is the strike price that you have selected well, guess what? In this video, I'm going to share with you a specific workflow, right? A very simple method that I personally use each time whenever I want to select any option strategy. So this way, you too can follow this workflow. And by the end of it, as long as you use it, you're going to become very self-proficient enough to know which DTE to select and which strike price to select without having to ask me or anyone, right? So I'm going to give you exactly, you know, how to analyze it as well. All right, so let's dive right in. So the very first decision we have to face whenever, you know, we are selecting any option strategies is which DTE to select right which days to expiration option you want to select right so dte stands for how many days left before the option actually expires so as you can see right in front of me i have the option chain it's actually already stated there right as you can see this one on top it says zero days it just means that there is zero days left to expiration which means it actually expires at the end of the trading day so this is why you know a lot of people love to trade this zero dte because you can realize the pnl very quickly right so zero days just means zero dte seven days seven dte 30 days 30 dte so on and so forth right so how do we decide which dte to choose as you can see many different choices now generally when we are trading this option selling strategies we want to go for slightly shorter time frame and when i mean shorter time frame i really mean anything that is under 70 days ideally right so basically anything from this range down here now the reason we don't want to go for anything that is much higher mainly because of what's called the theta decay right as you go further out in time the theta decay is not going to be that high that means your option premium or rather when you sell it it's not going to realize that profit that quickly right so generally you want to go for a shorter time frame now even in this shorter time frame there are many choices right from zero all the way to maybe around 72 dte so how do you decide which one you want to choose so for me, the way I decide which DT to choose comes down to what is the strategy that I select? What is the intention of the strategy that I want to use, right? So there are certain strategies that actually you do not mind getting assigned on. So the question you want to ask yourself is the strategy that you're going to select do you actually mind getting assigned on the underlying right when it says assign it means that either you go long or short the underlying shares right the underlying stock so if you do not mind actually getting assigned for example there are a few strategies like that you have the cash secure put you have the covered call and you have the wheel strategy or in my case the income grid wheel strategy by the way if you haven't heard of the term income grid wheel strategy before it is a strategy i came up with if you're curious just go to my channel. I've already created quite a number of videos on that. Just do a search on that and you'll see, you know, how exactly I trade the income grid real strategy. Now, let's say I decided that I do not mind actually getting assigned on the underlying, right? In that case, I would go for the shorter time frame. And when I mean shorter time frame, I just mean something from 30 days all the way, you know, down, right? Much lesser. So could be 1 DTE, 7 DTE, 14 DTE. Now, how do you decide which of these DTEs to choose? So first of all, I just want to say that if you do not mind getting assigned, I will go for this time frame. But if you mind getting assigned, that means you do not want to get assigned, then the ideal time frame would be anything that's above 45 days to around 70 days. And I'm going to explain a little bit why later on. But first, let us just tackle, you know, what if you actually do not mind getting assigned, for example, the wheel strategy. So when you're trading strategies like the wheel strategy, cover call, cash secure put, these type of strategies, what you need to decide on the DTE comes down to the relationship between the percentage return, right? Percentage return versus the absolute dollar amount that you're going to get. 
right? Because there's always a trade-off, right? So people will always ask me, David, what is the best DTE? The thing is that there is no best DTE because it comes down to whether you want a higher percentage return or you want more absolute dollars, right? So let me give you an example down here. So let me just remove the drawing. So let's use, you know, pretty extreme example down here. Let's take the 1 DTE and we compare that against the 30 DTEs. So let us compare this according to the at the money strike price. So the at the money strike price is 508 as you can see somewhere around here. Now if you were to sell this option, let's say for example you're selling the put option, the cash to cut put or maybe the wheel strategy, you're going to get 64 cents in terms of credit. So per option that is $64. And you get this $64 in just one day, right? Now, let us take a look at the 30 DTEs. Now, 30 DTEs, same thing as well. Let's choose the 508 strike price. Now, this time, you actually get $6 in credit, which is actually $600 per option, right? Because each option controls 100 shares. So you get $600 for selling this, but you have, you know, 30 days for it to actually you know get this full amount basically you have to realize it at the end of the 30 days so as you can see down here let us compare the two if you were to sell this how many times will you be able to match this 600 dollars in terms of premium you receive well all you got to do simple math just times it by 10 times right if you times this 64 dollar premium you receive times 10, you get $640, which means to say, if this is a 1 DTE times 10, that means in 10 days, you can get $640. But then for this one, you'll be getting $600, but only in 30 days, right? As you can see, $640 in 10 days, $600 in 30 days. So you might be thinking, Davis, this is very obvious, right? Very easy. Of course, we will go for this one down here because you can get much more premium in, and the return is going to be much higher, of course. So definitely we're going to sell this. But what you're forgetting is that there's always a chance of getting assigned, right? Let's say, for example, you're only willing to just sell one put at a time, right? If you get assigned, you have no choice. You cannot sell another put until you close out those shares, right? So let's say you only can sell one option at each time. If you were to sell this one and at the end of the day or at the end of one day, you actually get assigned, then guess what? You're only going to get $64 and now you're long 100 shares at 508. But if you were to go for the 30 DTEs one and let's say at the end of the 30 DTE, you actually get assigned, then guess what? You're going to get 100 shares at 508, but this time you're going to get $600, which is much more. Right, So it really depends on how the underlying moves. So of course, if you are a trading genius to the point whereby every time you put on this uh, short put, it expires out of the money and you can keep selling this indefinitely, then you're going to be making much more if you go for the 1 DTE as opposed to the 30 DTEs, right? But for the rest of us, right, the rest of us mortals, human beings, we want to find a right balance. So that is what I do. So for me personally, I generally go for somewhere around the 7 to around 14 DTE because this will give me a right balance, right? At least a balance that I'm comfortable with. A nice balance between, you know, an acceptable amount of premium. At the same time, a pretty decent return as well if I don't mind getting a sign, right? So this is how I decide on the DTE based on strategies if I don't mind getting long the underlying shares. Now, the next thing that I want to you know, bring your attention to is this volatility on the right-hand side here because I also take a look at it whenever I select my DTE. So let me just remove all this drawing down here and let me just collapse this uh, DTEs so we can just put them you know, side by side to compare. So another thing that I like to look out for is this number on the right-hand side down here. Oops, let me just close this. Let me get my marker. So this number down here. So what you notice down here, there'll be a percentage. This is basically the IV. Now, what I'm not looking out for is a certain number, right? I'm not looking out for above 50%, above 100%, above 200%. No, nothing like that, right? I've already decided on this underlying. I will trade this underlying, right? What I'm looking out for is basically, is this IV in line with the one that is, you know, above and below it, right? So as you can see down here, this DTE, the 5 DTE one, 
what you notice is that it's 12.29% and you'll notice this is actually lower than the one above and lower than the one below. So this is lower than average and generally when I see this, I will actually avoid it. So why is this actually lower? The reason is because the exchange will actually release new options you know, regularly, right? Most of the time, it will be the weekly options. So whenever they release these weekly options, the trading activity is not that high. So generally, the volatility is much lower. So because the volatility is much lower, I tend to avoid it, right? I won't go for that. So I will wait until maybe the trading activity picks up and then over the next maybe weeks or maybe even days, if the volatility is back to the same as the surrounding, then I don't mind choosing that. Okay, so this is how we select the DTE if we don't mind getting a sign. Now, what if you actually mind getting a sign? You do not want to get long the underlying shares, you just want to trade the options. Now, in that case, then the one that you want to go for is somewhere from 45 DTE to around 70 DTE, this range. So basically, these three DTEs will be what you want to select. So why is this so? And the main answer is because of the relationship between the RM versus the expected move, which is the EM. So these are two terms that you need to be very familiar with if you want to do, you know, premium selling option strategies, right? RM, realized move, which means the actual move in the market. That's what the price, the underlying actually moves. Expected move is what the theoretical price is suggesting, right? The theoretical options pricing model is suggesting based on the volatility that's given, they predict that this is the range, the movement of the underlying, right? So let me just remove some of these drawings down here so we can be very clear. So first of all, realized move and expected move. What we are really looking out for is for the realized move to be lesser than the expected move. This is where we have the edge, right? This is the reason why we are going for the 45 to, you know, around 70 DTEs, basically above 45 DTEs. Because above 45 DTE, the Tasty Trade research team have come up with a very, very interesting piece of study, right? This research, they found out that when you're going for, you know, above 45 DTE trades, the realized move is actually most often of the time lesser than the expected move. What does that mean, right? So let me just illustrate to you. So let's say this is the expected move down here. Expected move, expected move is always depicted by around 16 deltas. So 16 deltas on both sides, right? So 16 delta on the put side, 16 delta on the call side. This is essentially the range which the option pricing model is telling us that it could move, right? This is the expected movement of the underlying stock that you have chosen. So based on this, they calculated what is the amount of each of the strike price. So let's say, for example, the one at 16 delta, let's just say that they assume that at 16 delta, this will be around $2, right? $2 and the one bottom $2 as well. But let's just focus at the one up there first, right? The one down here. So let's just say that they have depicted the price based on option pricing model, expected move, $2 down here. Now, what is the realized move? Realized move is the actual movement of the underlying that when it already happened, right? So the actual move, what they found out that is that it's most often of the time actually smaller than what the theory suggests, right? So that means to say this is actually the real 16 delta. Down here on the right hand side, this is the theory. They are thinking that this should be 16 delta. Actual range, this is the 16 delta. So what kind of implications does it have? Right, so two things. First thing, you need to understand that when we're trading the expected move, there's always a probability. So the probability of this staying inside the expected range is around 68%, right? So this is the number you need to keep in mind, roughly around 68%. But the actual move, the real 68%, is actually somewhere down here. This is the real 68%, which is actually a smaller range. So the theory based on the option pricing model, they think that it's a bigger range when it's actually smaller, which means to say, if you were to compare the expected move 16 delta range, which is somewhere here and down here, it's actually bigger compared to the real move of the underlying, which means to say, if the 16 delta, the actual one, inside the uh, realized move is 68%. That means based on the expected move, this one down here 
from here to here is more than 68%. More than 68%. Now, here's the other thing that is very important to understand. Based on expected move, they calculated this is $2. But the $2 should actually be here because that's the realized move. That means to say this should be the actual pricing of the option, $2, which is closer to where the current market price means, which means to say this one above down here, let's say it should be maybe around 13 deltas, right? Because we are now further away from the market. Now, as you know, as we go further out of the market, what happens to the premium, right? The premium actually becomes lesser. That means to say the premium down here is lesser than $2. So let's say, for example, maybe it's $1.70, right? Let's say it's $1.70. So here's the key thing to understand. You're actually supposed to be selling this for $1.70, but instead the option pricing is giving you $2. So you're selling it for more than it actually is worth. So that is why there is this edge only when you go for more than 45 DTE. Well, at least according to the Tasty Trade research team. Now, anything that is lesser than 45 DTE, then guess what? Less than 45 DTE, what they found out is that the RM is actually roughly equal to the EM, right? Basically, it just means that the calculation of the expected move seems to be pretty accurate. That means there's no edge, right? So if the theory suggests that from this price range down here, from this price range, to this price range is 68%. In reality, it is 68%. That means you're not going to get this edge whereby you actually win more than 68%. At the same time, you're also selling the fair value of the option price. They give you it's $2, you're actually selling for $2. But if you go for more than 45 DTE, you're actually selling it much more than what it's actually worth, which is the $1.70. So that is why if we do not want to get assigned, we want to just trade options for what it is, then this is where we want to take advantage of this edge, right? We want to have this edge whereby you're actually winning more than you theoretically should and you're selling a slightly more expensive you know, option, the premium you're getting more than you theoretically should. Okay, so I hope you really understood this uh, point. And that is why, again, I go for the ones above 45 DTE. Okay, now let's get into the strike price. By the way, if you like this video so far, please subscribe and also click the thumbs up button. And also do get your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint, where I share the top three option strategies that help you generate a consistent income each month trading just one to two hours a day, right? So if you want to go ahead to get this copy, just head on over to optionswithdavis.com slash blueprint. All right, back to the video. So for this example, I'm going to choose the 55 days one, right? So 55 DTE. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to open up the option chain. And the next thing you want to do is decide what is the strategy that you want to trade, right? So let's go for the most simple one or rather the most common one which is a credit spread right a lot of people love credit spread in this case i'm going to use the bull put spread as an example so the bull put spread we know that bull put spread there's always the short strike price and the long strike price so how do we select the short strike price so the way you select the short strike price a very simple method you can use is to bring up this column down here which says the probability of it being out of the money which means to say, essentially, it's pretty much like the win rate, right? Probability of out the money just simply means that what is the percentage chance of the strike price expiring out of the money, right? So for example, if we choose this strike price at 500, it has a 66.71% that the underlying will be above 500, right? As you can see, the option chain is reversed, right? As, it, as we go down the option chain, the number gets higher. So that is why I say higher, although I'm bringing the arrow down. So I just want to confuse you, make it very clear to you, right? So there is a 66.71% chance you're pretty much going to win on the trade if you hold to expiration, right? So this is the probability of out the money column, and we can use this to decide, you know, our strike price. So this now comes down to how you want to trade this, how you want to construct your bull put spread in this case. So some people might want the value win rate over premium. Some people want the value premium over win rate. So again, this is just a trade-off, a trade-off. Okay, so what is this trade-off? 
the closer you are to where the current market price is, then the higher the premium you're going to get, but the lower win rate, right? So let's say, for example, let me just remove all this drawing. Let's say we go to the extreme one of 508. So 508, let me just select this one down here. If you go for 508, and let's just say you go for maybe five points wide, right? Okay, just as example, five point wide. Then you notice you're going to get a dollar and 71 cents, right? A dollar and 71 cents in terms of premium. And your win rate is going to be roughly around 55%, right? This is going to be a rough gauge. So as you can see, 55%, $1.71 in terms of credit. Remember this. Now let's compare with the one that's on the other side, right? So I'm just going to remove this. Now let us go for the one somewhere around here, right? Let's just go for 25 delta. So there's a 73.68% chance of being right or rather to win at expiration. So let me just uh, click this one. So we are going for this 25 delta at 494. Five points wide is 489, right? So as you can see down here, now you notice your premium is only 79 cents, right? This is a, a far cry from $1.71 just now, which is, you know, significantly more. You get roughly about $1 more, which is about $100 more. But this time you get a higher win rate. You have roughly 73.68%. So which is the one you want to go for? So this is where you want to have a balance, right? A balance between the premium you want to receive and also your win rate, right? So in this case, I would suggest to go for somewhere in between. Basically, you do not want to go all the way so far off. Like for example, some people might go to the extreme. They like to go for the 10 delta ones or maybe even the 5 delta one, right? So let us just explore the extreme down here and see whether it's actually worth it because you can see down here, this is very tempting. It says 95% chance, 94.56% chance. Who doesn't want to win 94.56% of the time? But if you were to take a look at the premium, all right, let's just craft one to take a look. Let's see 445 then, 445, 440. What kind of premium are you going to get? Well, you're going to get only nine cents, guys. Nine cents, that's just $9. After commissions, I don't know. What do you have left? Could you even buy a, a cup of coffee at Starbucks? I have no idea, right? So $9, but you have 94.66%. After all the commissions, maybe not that worth it. So what I mean by, you know, having a good balance, what I really mean is somewhere around this range down here. I would say somewhere around 30 deltas for the put credit spread, mainly because if you were to go too far down, right, higher win rate might be a little bit to get good premiums, and then if you get one big loss, it's going to wipe out quite a lot of your losses. So that is why, you know, generally for the put credit spread, I like somewhere around 25, 35, 40 deltas, right? So if you're a little bit more conservative, you could go more towards the smaller range of the delta, which means to say you have a higher win rate around here. So let us craft one, let's say around 495, 495, 490, which is 84 cents. And your max loss is roughly around $416, right? So you get $84, around $416. Cents. I mean, $416 in terms of your loss. Mm, uh, this is something you need to decide, right? Because of course, when the volatility is lower, you're going to get lesser premium, right? So most of the time, put credit spread, I tend to like to put it when the market comes down. When the market comes down, premium increases. This is where, you know, even 25 Delta, you can get, you know, pretty decent premiums. So if you don't like the premiums for the 25 Delta, right, 73%, we could go to somewhere around this point down here. Let's say 499. 499 minus five, this one, we get roughly a dollar, which is not too bad, right? A dollar, you get roughly 67.95% theoretical win rate. And don't forget, we are talking about the realized move most of the time being lesser than expected move. And we are going for the DTE that's above 45. As you can see down here, this is 55. It should be 55. Did I get it right? Yes, 55 DTE. Which just means that the theoretical win rate is not as accurate, right? So basically, you should get a higher win rate as long as the RM holds true that it's going to be lesser than the expected move for that particular trade, right? Of course, not every single trade, the RM is going to be smaller than EM 
over a long term, over many trades. That's where the edge will start to realize. Okay, now, what about selecting other types of strategies? So other types of strategies, let's say, for example, the broken wing butterfly. So let's take a look at the broken wing butterfly right now. So for the broken wing butterfly, same thing as well, right? We take a look at the probability of out of the money, right? What is the percentage that you generally want it to have? So generally, if you like somewhere around 80% win rate and always, you know, we want to have a fine balance between premium and the win rate as well, then we want to go for somewhere around, you know, 20 deltas, which is roughly around the expected move, 16 to 20 deltas. But generally, broken wing butterfly, if you want to have some decent premium, you want to go somewhere around 20, maybe even 25 delta, right? If you are a little bit more aggressive as well, sometimes some people go for 30 deltas. As you can see, there's no best one, right? It comes down to your comfort and the risk. So again, what I like to do is evaluate where my risk is, where my risk lies. So for these strategies that I share with you so far, the put credit spread, put brokering butterfly, my risk is on the downside, right? So if it's on the downside, I want to position it whereby, you know, I at least do not have that big of a chance to get wrong, whereby the market will come down and then I'm going to lose money. So let's just use the example of roughly around 20 deltas, right? So let's craft one broken wing butterfly down here. So with the broken wing butterfly, although this says that you have a 78.3% kind of chance of win rate of, uh, you know, not losing on this strike, don't forget how the put broken wing butterfly construct is because the way we construct the put broken wing butterfly is whereby this short strike is actually where your maximum profit is going to be. So your break even is actually going to be much lower there because with the put broken wing butterfly, there is an embedded put debit spread, right? So let me just craft one for you to see. So for this, we're going to have two short strikes down here for the put broken wing butterfly. And then let's just craft one roughly about, let's say 10 points wide. So 10 points wide. I need to do this manually, by the way, on the Thinkorswim web platform. Now, if you use the desktop or any other platform, I don't think you have to do this manually. But, you know, if you, are, if you have to do this manually, then you got no choice, right? But it's pretty much very simple, right? So as you can see down here, I've crafted one put broken wing butterfly like this, okay? So you can see down here, I still have roughly about 45 cents credit, which is $45. But let's take a look at what's my max profit. So for this, we need to go to the P&L graph. So as you can see, this is the P&L graph down here. And you notice this is where the short strike is. So if the short strike is here, it means to say that your loss won't be at this point. It will be only back down here, right? This is where your uh, break even point is. And the reason is because you already have this embedded put debit spread that actually helps you, you know, get profits if it moves below this point down here. So that's why your break even is pushed for the back. So that's why for the put broken wing butterfly, if you go for somewhere around the 20 deltas, then your win rate is definitely going to be more than 80%, right? Sometimes it can be even pushed to roughly about 90%, depending on how you actually construct it. Right, so this is the put broken wing butterfly, and how I would actually construct this uh, one. All right, how you're going to choose the strike price. So for the long strike price down here, let me just go over it very quickly. Uh, for this long strike price for the put debit spread, this is where you want to play around with the strike price because there is no real defined strike price that is fixed at each time. It depends on how big of a max profit zone you want. Right, what is the max profit you want? So let's say, for example, if I choose one that is slightly further away, now you notice I have a five point wide embedded put debit spread. I'm going to get slightly lesser premium upfront, right? So let's go to the PL graph again. As you can see at the end, you can see it's $28 if it goes above where the current market price is. So this is where the current market price is. You notice if it goes up, you make money, comes down, you make money. If it goes even further down into this zone, you have a chance to potentially make even more. This is where the break even point is right down here. You don't want this to go past this point, right? So what is the max profit that you can make? You can see down here is roughly about $500, right? Almost five, yep, around $506. So this is the put broken butterfly in terms of the strike price, how you want to choose. Now, the last example I want to show you is the iron condor, right? Iron condor is another 
pretty popular strategy that you know quite a number of people like to use so the iron condor how do we select the strike price now so far for the two strategies i've shared with you we only have pretty much risk to one side which is the downside right if it keeps going up this is where we don't have to worry because we still get a profit now for the iron condor we have risk to both sides we have risk on the downside we have risk to the upside so that is why whenever i'm going for any strategies that has risk to both sides generally i like to go for the expected move and as you already know just now we talked about it what is the expected move expected move is somewhere around the 16 delta so again let us take a look at the delta and the probability of being out of the money right so on this end as you can see down here 16 deltas right 16 deltas roughly 82.73 now this is if only we choose the short put but don't forget we have the other side as well so on the other end let us go for something around 16 deltas now generally 16 deltas is what i will choose for strangle for the iron condor because it's a defined risk strategy i would suggest to go for something slightly higher delta otherwise you won't get that much premium so you may get slightly more premium but your win rate is going to suffer a little bit slightly so instead of using the 16 delta let me just change to the 20 deltas down here so the other side i'm going to choose the 20 delta as well which is somewhere around here so 20 delta on this side 20 delta on the other side remember delta is also a rough estimation of the probability of it being in the money and also out of money right you just take the 100 percent minus the percentage of the delta right so in this case 20% is going to be in the money. You're going to lose money, right? So in this case, 20% this side, 20% on the call side, which means to say inside is roughly 60%. 60% is the theoretical win rate, right? But again, we're talking about RM versus EM. So we know that the win rate should be higher than 60%. So now that we have already selected the strike price for the short strike, how do we select the long strike so this is something i haven't talked about so far in this video but i did mention in quite a number of videos so i'm going to just reiterate to just re-emphasize reinforce what you've learned before if you already watched it if not you're going to learn how to construct the wings so this is what we call the wings for the iron condor so the way you can do it there are two ways right two ways you can construct this number one a fixed wing a fixed dollar width that means to say if you want something like five dollars wide you just go five dollars wide for both sides so five three two plus five that's five three seven but you can see here we have a dilemma the dilemma is there's no five three seven so why is there no five three seven maybe because the option pricing guys can't see right they left out this one or for some reason they love to you know mess us up they love to you know catch us off guard and go haha you can't place a five dollar wide so what you got to do well you just have to play around with what you got right so maybe you can go for a six point wide one so six point wide will be six dollars uh five three eight down here on the other end also go for a six point wide now hopefully we have the strike here otherwise we need to really speak to some people regarding you know whoever created this option pricing table right so 489 minus 6 aha uh -huh, 483 so we'll keep the complaints letter for a while we leave it to later on again when we can't find the strike price we want so as you can see down here this is how we can do it so base it on on the width that you want so let's say six dollars you have one for this what is the max risk all you got to do is just go to the pnl graph again so if you go to the pnl graph down here take a look at the max risk is four to six so if your risk is let's say a thousand dollars for each trade then go for two contracts right two contracts now the other way that you want to construct the long strike would simply just be you know match it to what is your risk per trade so let me just bring back the strikes because i accidentally removed that and let's remove these drawings as well right looks a little bit funny to keep it there so 536 was it 536 no it was 532 that's right so 532 now let's say for example your risk is a thousand dollars if your risk is a thousand dollars should we just go for roughly around 10 points wide and luckily they have a 10 point wide strike for us so we're going to go for this on the other end we're going to go for the 20 delta one as well 489 and then go for 10 points wide which is 479 so now let's take a look at our max risk and then we adjust from there so from here you can see our max risk is 744 dollars max profit 
256. So now we know that the max range is 744. We actually still have some risk we can put on the table, right? We cannot go for two contracts, as you can see, because it will clearly exceed the $1,000 that we have set for ourselves. So what we can do is just simply expand these wings down here. So let us try to expand by another two more points. And on the other side as well, let us expand by another two more points. And let's just see what do we have. Okay, so as you can see, pretty decent. We have 911 as our max loss and our max profit is roughly around $289. So now we have already fit it into our risk per trade. So this is how we select the DTE and the strike price. A very simple workflow. So if you want to reinforce this again, I suggest go over this video again over and over many times until you can really understand what I'm sharing in this video. So the next time, anytime I share a strategy, go through this workflow and you would know by yourself, self-proficient enough, you will know exactly which DTE, which strike price to choose. By the way, if you like this video, then you're absolutely going to love this next video which I have for you. So go ahead and watch that video right now. Also, if you haven't already gotten your free copy of the Options Income Blueprint, you can do so just by clicking this link down here on your screen and you'll be able to get it for free. All right, I will see you in the next video.